Writing and executing a successful joke for film or TV is one of the hardest things to do. In more dramatic moments in a film, it's a lot easier to have a discussion on whether or not a scene or moment achieved its goal. But a joke is different. If the audience laughs, it succeeds. If they don't, it fails. Many films have long sequences of heightened tension or dark drama. When this happens in long stretches, it is sometimes necessary to relieve that tension momentarily. This is why comic relief is an important part of constructing scenes and sequences. Comic relief provides a balance to an otherwise dramatic film, but there's a way it's done right and a way it's done wrong. There aren't any hard and fast rules on how to correctly deliver comic relief, but I think there are some examples that show what works and what doesn't. First, I want to talk about constructing the jokes themselves. Jokes are made up of two simple parts, the setup and the punchline. The setup helps the audience understand the necessary details so that the joke works. The punchline twists the information given in the setup for comedic effect. This simple formula means that the screenwriter should be able to predict and plan each point where the audience will laugh. Simple enough, but many characters built for comic relief disobey this formula. One of the most hated characters in cinema suffers from this problem, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar has the occasional setup and punchline, but overall we are supposed to find him funny because he is quirky or odd. But just because a character is clumsy doesn't make them funny. This meant that anyone over the age of 10 found Jar Jar cringy instead of humorous. You know, I find that Jar Jar creature to be a little odd. Second, the comic relief should stay true to the world of the film. Even if the joke itself is funny, it can be out of place. Take this example from Doctor Strange. Strange talks to the librarian about Beyonce. You're not ready for that. Try me, Beyonce. Come on, you've heard of her. She's a huge star, right? This is the setup, and it's already poorly done. It's a joke about a pop singer from America in a film about ancient sorcery and magic in the Far East. The punchline happens in the next scene where we see the librarian listening to Beyonce. The joke works. When I watched this film, others in the theater laughed. But to me, the joke felt contrived and out of place. This character would not be the type of person to listen to American pop music. He spends his time studying about multiple dimensions and realms in a temple of magic and sorcery. He is a man entrenched in tradition and mysticism. The joke felt inconsistent with his character. Not only was the joke out of place, but it will also slowly cease to be relevant. Someone watching the film 20 years in the future will not find the joke as funny as someone watching now. I understand that the filmmakers were not really shooting for timelessness in this film, but the idea still stands. A joke should be funny within the confines of the movie, and this means that people watching the film later will still find the joke humorous. Now let's take a look at an example of this idea done right. This is a scene from Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Legolas is fighting the men on the Oliphant. This is part of the overall battle for Minas Tirith. Legolas counts the men as he kills them, reminding us of his competition with Gimli and also setting up the joke. Legolas proudly slides down the Oliphant towards Gimli, who delivers the punchline. Not only is it funny, it also makes sense for the characters. The joke helps lower the tension after this big cinematic moment, and acts as a transition to the next part of the battle. The joke also remains funny even when viewing the film 15 years later. Third, always keep in mind the genre and tone of the film. In The Dark Knight, some of the film's comic relief comes from the Joker. It's... It's gone. Many of his jokes are both dark and unsettling, but also funny in their own way. The Joker's jokes fit the dark dramatic tone and simultaneously help shake this psychopathic monster. Another good example is Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. This film maintains a light, adventurous tone even though it's about cursed beings and evil corporations. Jack Sparrow consistently makes jokes and fumbles along through the film in a completely immersive and believable fashion because the film has created a wonderful mix of humorous spirit and dark adventure. A firm understanding of comic relief makes it easier to construct and analyze the dramatic beats of a film. It's a simple idea that can be difficult to master, but when it's done right, it can add depth to characters and contribute to the flow of the story. Thanks for watching.